Hi, I'm Jack, the founder of Kayaking Group in Portland, Oregon. Today we're looking at Airvolution versus Razorlight kayaks. I know that's a question that so many people have had. These kayaks just came out, while well, these ones have been on the market for a while. Today's the first day I got a chance to actually paddle this one, and I'm excited to compare the two. Most important question that people might have is, how do, how do they stack up speed-wise? Is Airvolution any faster? What I'm noticing right away is that Airvolution is significantly wider. Because of that, it's actually, from my little experience right now, I've just paddled it for about three miles. Uh, in my observation, it appears to be slightly slower than Razor Light, but at the same time, it's significantly more stable. So for novice kayakers, you might actually appreciate how stable it is. The thing to note, though, is that because they enclose the front and the back, you have less storage area. So if your intention is to go camping, I noticed that Razor Light probably offers much more space to store things. Something that a lot of people mention about Razor Light kayaks, that they weathercock, meaning they get affected by the wind. And if you're paddling in the wind, a lot of times you find yourself paddling on one side all the time to, to correct for it. Air Evolution seems to have that problem even greater, unfortunately. Now I will take both of these kayaks on a little spin and I will try to compare the speed of them in just regular uh, paddling and at maximum speed that I can reach. Conditions are not perfect, but I'll try to do my best to stay as objective as I possibly can. Let's see what happens. See what razor light does. Actually, weather conditions are not super favorable and consistent. We had a little bit more wind when I tested this one, but it does appear that it does pretty much everything similarly, except for it goes one kilometer an hour faster at any conditions, and it weathercocks a little bit less than air evolution. At the same time, it's tippier. So if you're a novice kayaker, you might enjoy air evolution stability better. If you want to go faster, and carry gear, go for razor light. Also, just to be clear, today I paddled both of them in a configuration of single paddler, but both, but both of them are in uh, tandem kayaks. This one has seats, one thing to mention, that I find less uh, comfortable than razor lights. They don't go quite as far and don't feel as supportive on the back, but it doesn't seem to be a big deal. Thank you for watching and uh, come paddle with us in Portland, Oregon. The biggest difference between these two kayaks boils down to the philosophy that was used at manufacturing a very similar product. Advanced elements stayed true to their style of enclosing kayaks and allowing an option of using a spray skirt. That added the weight and made the kayak heavier. I would bet that more than 90% of owners of these kayaks will never have a spray skirt on these, and it appears 
to do more with appearances, I suspect. It does make the kayak look sleeker and more professional, but at a cost of extra weight and lost storage space. And the reason I strongly suspect this kayak is not meant for pro kayakers going out on the ocean and rolling with it is because of how wide it is. I don't think you could roll this kayak, and you certainly wouldn't want to. Sea Eagle concentrated on giving people just what they needed on the water, speed and cargo capacity, 